folks, here we go again. Young kids are causing quite the stir on the internet. What exactly are they doing? Girls and boys are posting videos on YouTube and asking others if they're pretty or ugly. Now, while some of you might have reservations, I think it's great. Ask away, kids. What, you didn't think I'd say that? Hear me out. Now, I'm not going to show the videos because I don't think there's any need to perpetuate this cycle. But when a young person says this, I just wanted to make a random video seeing if I was like ugly or not because a lot of people call me ugly and I think I'm ugly and fat. Honestly, my heart aches. Seeing kids looking for validation in others and don't think people aren't watching. The video I just quoted has had more than four and a half million views and that number is climbing. What's worse is that the responses can be vicious. For example, you need to fix that mess called your face, or you look like something my dog ate, or attention seeker. Attention seeker? More like a cry for help. What would lead young people to want others to judge them like this? Well, probably the same thing that leads adults to do it. The constant barrage of fad diets and models that are one pound above skin and bones and constant references to one's posterior can create unrealistic pressures and expectations. Those of us on TV <clears throat> can pretend that we're above all this, am I pretty, but we're not. There's a whole industry built on the insecurities of, frankly, people like me. Did you notice the cover of Forbes this week? One of the newest billionaires is Sarah Blakely, the creator of Spanx. Yes, I said billionaire. She made her fortune on the backsides of people like us. So before we jump to tell the kids to get off the computer, you might want to look in the mirror before you put your Spanx on. And when you do, instead of saying something negative, Say something nice to yourself because there might be little ears listening and the person from whom they take their lead is you. Coming up, Margaret Cho has something to say to the young people posting these videos and the bullies who comment on them. You probably think you know my next guest, but I bet there is much more to her than you expect. She is the one who's made you bust a gut with her comedy while she busted through stereotypes and gender barriers. And this versatile performer is also part of the cast of Lifetime's Drop Dead Diva. Whether in her comedy or her activism, she is always honest about her struggles and how they've made her stronger. Joining me now is comedian and actress Margaret Cho. I ended the last hour talking about the... I think highly problematic YouTube videos where young people are asking strangers mm -hmm. on the internet, mm -hmm. am I pretty, am I ugly, please, you know, sort of opening themselves up for judgment and the willingness of strangers to judge. And I know that you've, you've responded to this recently. Yeah, I, I felt really just heartbroken for these kids as I know what that is. You, when you're growing up, you want somebody to tell you what you are, who you are, and the problem with this is that the, the, the people are not always willing to be kind, they're not willing to be even truthful, mm -hmm. and the truth is all kids are beautiful. Right. They're all beautiful. There, 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 there is nothing out there, there's nothing, there's no such thing as fat, there's no such thing as ugly, you know, they are just these perfect representation, representations of life, and they should just be that, but it's so hard to get kids to understand that. They want some kind of proof and you know people can be terrible because people have their own issues about how, how they feel about themselves right so they'll respond in, in, in terrible ways in appropriate ways you know and these are kids but it's, it's and, and, but, it's, it, but it's also not just kids I mean I, I think about the the critiques that any person in public life gets right and you know I'll get the emails or the tweets or whatever you're stupid you're dumb whatever and they, they literally roll off my back but the you're fat you're ugly, you have a... I mean, somehow th that sense of our sort of having a stake in, in our embodiment and mm -hmm. our desire to not have people say that to us mm -hmm. is, yes, it's kids, but it's also not... We don't just sort of grow out of it, right? This is why Sarah Blakely is our, you know, youngest self-made woman billionaire, right? Yeah. Is in part because we are literally pushing ourselves into her products. That's not kids doing that, that's adults, right? Well, with Spanx too, um, I have a little bit of a problem with Spanx because um, I like coffee and I have a touch of IBS. <laughs> so I, I, I make stanks <laughs> when I wear them. No, they're in public. If you gotta you can't, go, you cannot have, go in a spank. I don't have time. There's there's have, a, there's a little slip, but you really they're not. It's not big enough. <laughs> it's not big enough. Not for me. I I think that you know what what this 
this company has done. I mean, of course, it's great that a woman is successful, but she's right. successful on the, the, the theory that we hate our bodies mm -hmm. and we, we want to minimize them as much as we can. We want to minimize every part of us. We want to suck it in and shove it in and make sure we don't show. Right. And um, it sort of uh, it, it endorses women's invisibility. Like if we mm. can compress ourselves, then somehow we are more womanly and more powerful. And it's a it's a strange thing they're selling to kind of take up as little room on the planet as possible. Yes. Right. With to, to have the, the softest voice and the smallest body so that you take up as little room and as little space. Right. You know, we will often see, for example, male political leaders take up a lot of room at a mm -hmm. table. And but there's ways in which we teach girls to just compress back. themselves and to and especially well, in my culture in Korean American culture, it, it's, it's very different. It still remains very old world where my family, even though they uh, wanted me to be successful, they couldn't help me visualize what it was because mm. in their mind, success was marriage and right. their mind, success was uh, a man. Well, so I, I want to actually go to exactly this topic, because if we're thinking about young people who are dealing with issues of shame and stigma and compressing themselves, the, the experiences faced by LGBT youth are probably at the core of this. And so I want to take a look at your It Gets Better video for just a moment. Okay. Hi, this is Margaret Cho. I want to talk to all the gay teens out there who feel alone, who feel bullied, who feel like taking their own life might be an answer. Well, it's not. It's not. I want to tell you that you're not alone. And I was bullied so much when I was a kid and so much as a teenager. And there were many, many times that I wanted to take my own life. But don't do it. We need you. The world cannot go on without you. Stay with us. We love you so much. I love that It Gets Better project. This yes. idea of people just pausing and saying what mm. needs to be said and which, what often is not said. What else can we do? What are, what are the ways we can intervene for LGBT youth? I think it's really about reaching out to them in, in a sense that there is a, like, a problem with mentoring in, in the LGBT community because we don't sometimes feel entitled as the older generation to reach down to the younger generation, that there is not the um, necessarily the familial connection. And then sometimes we just don't feel like we uh, apply to that, you know, but we have to be. We have to be their mentors and their elders. And I think that, you know, it's also important to talk about um, growing up and, 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 and getting sort of a, a revenge from all of this. You know, it's one thing to say, oh, I'm going to rise above it. And I'm like, no, I'm going to I'm going to stay here and and, you know, then face this. You know, it's like not enough to rise above it. It's not enough to like consider the source or it's like I don't want to be the better person and and my GPS <laughs> I like that. Not I don't I don't want to be the road. That's right. I don't want to be the better person. I just want to be the more success. I just want to win. I just want to win. I yeah. just want I just want to um, survive this. And sometimes the best way to talk about it to help kids survive this is to sort of just go, you know what? Let's just let's just make them feel really bad by growing up and being so amazing that, you know, you you, you should not shortchange your life because people are mean to you. If you have, if you bullies, bully back by living well. Mm. I like this idea of, of bullying back by success by not um, not being crushed under it. But, you know, when you talk about winning, of course, my mind immediately goes to politics and this idea that sometimes you're fighting and you lose. And the the personhood amendments that are currently, um, you know, kind of on these state ballots, and that it feel to me, uh, personhood and the other sort of reproductive rights and, and choice amendments that we're seeing, I mean, these are real fights, not just by schoolyard bullies, but often by legislative bullies. Mm -hmm. What do we take from our kind of cultural world that we can deploy in that political world? I think what's important to know is that we all have a voice and now more than ever with the way that technology is, the way blogging is, the way we can tweet things, the way we can talk about things so publicly that we have a format. Suddenly um, the individual becomes like it's this amazing, like opinionated right. source. And so this is like a really great thing. So I think it's about taking advantage of things like blogging and tweeting and whatever, you know, that that is out there for us. Right. This is the kind of democratic with a little D possibility of new media, right? You don't have to wait for a network to give you a show. You can actually sort of develop your own platform. Now, the, the question is, then how do you build an audience, particularly if you're 
relatively marginal. What any any ways that you might think about talking to young people around that? I think it's really about finding out what needs to be said, what you need to say, and then the message is strong. The message is sort of rely on the message, and the message will take you. Yeah, we're going to come back. We have more, and we're going to be joined by Jen Posner, who is a researcher and studier and commenter on um, women in politics and media. And I got to tell you, she almost jumped out of her seat when she found out she got to be uh, on set with you. So Margaret Cho and I will be back with Jen Posner talking about female power when we get back.